Do you know how political problems often feel like sticking a cactus up your bum? Well, the one thing I found which always helps is to get a clear and realistic understanding of the situation. And that's what I do here. I mark, and this is logic of our time. Are we you have a point 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 Well, since we're talking about rectally inserted cacti, Brexit. So in June 2016, the UK voted to leave the European Union. But more than three years later, it remains in the EU and its politics reaches one low point after the other. In this video, I'll try to explain the basic logic of the Brexit negotiations and why the Irish border was always going to be the ultimate reality that Brexiteers' unrealistic claims were going to crash into. <clears throat> always dangerous when unrealistic British claims crash into other countries. Much in the Brexit negotiations concerns economic life, so we'll need to address the differences between a single market, a customs union, a basic free trade agreement and the trading rules of the World Trade Organization. I'll order them here by how closely linked or independent countries want their economic policies to be. So let's create two countries off the coast of the Atlantic to illustrate this. Dear US and Russia, I only just created these islands. Please don't invade. And now imagine the two countries trade with each other. But to protect their own businesses from competition, they both levy fees when goods from that other country are imported. Thus, foreign goods are artificially made more expensive and less appealing. And this makes successful cheesemakers very angry. They think, if only we could sell our cheese in the other country without this stupid border tax, we could reach way more customers. And customers could pick many more cheeses. <laughs> and so the cheesemakers pressure their governments and the two countries abolish their tariffs on cheese. But here's the issue. Nowadays, most countries are part of the World Trade Organization. And that entails the most favored nation principle. Which means, in principle, you're not allowed to have different tariffs for different countries. So you can't just abolish tariffs on cheese imports from one country. You have to free all cheese of import tariffs. Let my cheddar go. Obviously. There are exceptions. The countries might liberalize their trade more widely and sign an agreement that says we will not raise tariffs against each other on most goods and services. And that's a free trade agreement. The treaties of the WTO allow that if the agreement covers quote substantially all trade. So with regional free trade agreements, yes, you can have different tariffs for different countries. Rules don't apply to superpowers generally and stable geniuses in particular. Consult your local authoritarian. And now in negotiations with others, our two countries have an idea. What if we acted as one? If they had the same external tariffs against other countries, they could leverage their combined economic power in trade negotiations and so they form a customs union. In a way, this gives the countries less power because they can no longer act independently. But in another way, it means they now have more power because they act as one. By your powers combined, I am Captain Planet! Captain Planet, he's a hero! But to be absolutely clear, none of this means our cheesemakers can just go to the other country and sell their cheese. For example, there would still be a border check to enforce the different rules and regulations and to prevent smuggling. And even once in the other country, they'd still have to consult food authorities and license their produce. It's only on the next step of economic integration that you can think about abolishing border checks, when you create a single market. That's when the two countries agree to use the same regulations and recognize each other's licensing bodies. And only then, cheesemakers from one country can go to the other country and pretty much directly sell their produce without significant delay. So much for general theory. General theory. 
Let's look at this in more concrete terms. The treaties of the EU single market establish that, in it, four things should move freely. Goods, services, capital and workers. Those are called the four fundamental freedoms. An everlasting unity of principle for a family of nations. The holy quaternity of Europe. Well, unless banks are in trouble, then capital controls are fine. Brexiteers promised the UK would regain full control of immigration and its economic foreign policy. I hope you can now see from this graph that these promises are only possible if the UK is neither in the single market nor has a customs union with the EU. But let's look at this in more concrete terms. For another graph was made. In the land of Belgium, in the offices of the EU, chief negotiator Michel Barnier forged in secret a master graph to combat all others. One graph to rule them all. So here it is. Let's start where the UK leaves the European Union. The next closest association possible would be to be part of the single market, but not of the EU. But that wouldn't be possible because the UK doesn't want to accept the European Court of Justice, nor does it want free movement, nor substantial financial contributions, and it wants regulatory autonomy. All of that is not possible in the single market, so there goes this solution. Another way would be the solution my country chooses having market access with bilateral treaties. But again, the UK doesn't want free movement, nor substantial financial contributions, and it wants regulatory autonomy. So a little less close of an association would be what Ukraine has, which is an association agreement with the EU. But again, the UK doesn't want European Court of Justice jurisdiction, and it wants regulatory autonomy, which both don't work. So that solution is gone too. Then you could think about having a customs union with the EU, like Turkey. But that would mean the UK doesn't have an independent trade policy. So that only leaves two options. Having a free trade agreement like Canada or South Korea, or not having any special deal with the EU, which is by far the UK's largest trading partner. Which would be completely sane. <laughs> So either of the two options means there will need to be more border checks between the UK and the EU. We've seen the logic. The more autonomy the UK wants, the more border checks there need to be. And since Brexiteers are committed to total autonomy, that also means they want to erect a fully fledged border again. Let me be clear, that'd be a completely legitimate aspiration. Were it not that the previous UK government has promised it would not create such a hard border on the island of Ireland. What? A British government breaking a promise to the Irish? But that's unheard of! The problem is that this border runs right through communities between the Republic of Ireland, which is an EU member state, and Northern Ireland, which is a part of the UK. You probably remember that for decades there's been a bitter conflict in Northern Ireland and there's universal worry that a hard border with border checks would lead to violence. I'll explain this in more detail in the next video. Here I just want to make the point that this was always going to be the logical outcome of the position of hard Brexiteers. They want more autonomy for the UK, fine, but this creates a hard border in Ireland so if they were reasonable, they'd see that it's on them to offer realistic solutions to this problem that their own position created. <laughs> oh my god, you're still here! Uh, wait a second, have you watched the entire video? Did you like the new style or are you very angry? Maybe they liked the new style. <laughs>
<laughs> well, anyways, thanks very much for watching. Uh, this was the first video of my rebranded channel, Logic of Our Time. I'm trying to make this into one of uh, several independent income streams to free myself of wage labor. And um, so if you like it, please subscribe so I hit a thousand subscribers and I can monetize the videos on YouTube. But the real cool shit you get over on my Patreon page. People who decide to support me with a few bucks every video get cool specials. For example, you can suggest Easter eggs and jokes that I should put into the videos and we'll vote on which ones are included. Or you can vote on the next topic that I should cover. Or maybe you just want to see how I fuck up and see the outtakes. On the side, I'm also programming a plugin to make your videos on your website interactive. I'll include the link to the Kickstarter campaign in the video description once it's ready. I'm also writing a book on the site called Knowledge and Bullshit, which is about how you yourself can find out whether something is true or not. My bigger aim is to be able to travel around Europe and the US in a mobile home, make videos like these whilst making a book tour and earn my living that way. If you like that, then your support is much appreciated towards that goal. And if you like the video, then I'll see you in the next one. Thanks very much for watching.